I guess, would be looking at their, their offense and what they did in the beginning of last year when they inserted JT Daniels into a line to change up their offense a little bit, a little bit quicker pace. Uh, do you expect them to go back to the old Georgia, or are you looking at both sides, both things you saw last year? Whatever was good for them, they're going to have in, uh, for sure. Um, you know, once JT took over, obviously things uh, were a lot more fluid, and, and uh, both the running and the passing game, uh, physical play action, spread spread you out, attack you short, attack you deep. Um, you know, they got a lot to their offense that they do really, really well, and uh, and beat a really, really good Cincinnati uh, team uh, to finish off you know the year. So uh, you know they expect them to do what what worked well for them last year. There's a lot that did. Cincinnati had success stopping the run game. JT Daniels had a, a big game. They made them what is that big game? Yeah, 400 yards. 400 that's a yards. that's a pretty that's a pretty big game. That's a <laughs> that's a monster game actually. 400 yards, uh, and you know I think Cincinnati went in and, and sold out in regards to the you know the run game, and uh, so the byproduct of that was you know exposing themselves in the back end. So, uh, but gave themselves a chance to win. You know, as, as you saw. Uh, so, um, you know, that's. So, you, what were you asking? I'm sorry, I cut you off. I didn't let you finish. Uh, 400 yards. They were still able to make him uncomfortable at times. What can you kind of take away from what they did? Um, that Georgia can win different kinds of ways. You know, they don't have to run the ball. That those there's there there cannot be a better. A uh, group of running backs in college football uh, than what Georgia has. It's not convenient to say. You, from afar, you've kind of looked, saw, saw that. You know, for a number of years, they've done a great job there at uh, having a stable of backs. That's not really surprising, and uh, uh, they've got it right now. That might be the. Uh, that's definitely one of the strengths of their football team, and um, but uh, they don't have to. As you saw against Cincinnati, uh, was not going to be. You know, was not going to allow them to run the football, and uh, and so Georgia took advantage of that, and uh, did a did a great job. JT, uh, you know, handled the pressure very very well. He throws the ball extremely well under pressure, uh, one of the highest ratings in college football uh, under pressure, with whatever the amount of minimum temps are, and uh, so um, he's a he's a guy that's very talented uh, that can. Make quick decisions and uh, make uh, good decisions under duress, and uh, and you know throws the ball with accuracy and timeliness, and uh, the kind of uh, you know arm strength that you got to have, you know, in the college game. From a personnel standpoint, they they lost a couple guys to tight end. How do you know that? Did they release a depth chart that we're not aware of? Uh, not that I know of. But oh, I well, I don't. I don't know. Another guy has an in surgery. I don't know. I think Gilbert's not. I don't even know. I don't know. <laughs> they said they'd be back. So they you said they'd be. What you expect from that position? What you're you expect everybody back. You know, uh, and and in whether it's if it's Fitzpatrick and uh, the California freshman, uh, you know, you got, uh, you know, they've got that it was a position of strength for them a year ago, and they've got a bunch of those guys back. Have recruited very well. So, uh, you know two and the three tight end packages. We expect to see all of that, you know, and, and um, uh, so uh, Fitzpatrick can run. He's really, really athletic and, you know, he was the point man last year, you know, as far as the, the attached tight end that's going to move people. And, and uh, so he's got, you know, great toughness to him. Very, uh, you know, they their tight ends are big, long, athletic, uh, can play in space and they can attach and, and you know, bloody your nose too. Their, their offensive line too when you, when you look at their, how big they are. Um, they're probably a lot like Ohio State, you know, as far as, you know, uh, you know, Notre Dame in some ways, probably a little bit more like Ohio State though. You know, just they're good. Size or just what good they physicality, or? you know, size, athletic ability. Fred, it seems like um, you guys have a lot of experience depth mm -hmm. up front along the defensive line. What does that allow you to do this year? Well, that especially outside, yeah. not as much inside. Yeah. Uh, if you just look at the, uh, you know, the returning experiences outside, so it's good. You know, it's a bunch of good ones. We've got a bunch of guys that are capable of starting, and 
uh, you know, when we uh, substitute, uh, you know, we'll be able to substitute a lot more aggressively. And then when we do, you know, uh, if any at all, uh, not much drop off. Which one is compared to that 2014 group? Do you think that's a fair comparison in your mind? Um, at, at, you're saying that group, you're talking about defensive end? The, the whole line. Um, we don't have the depth inside, uh, but we definitely do outside. I think it's comparable outside. And, um, you know, we had a, a number of guys that started games on a second team defensive tackle. Uh, we don't, y'all got the numbers. You know who started and who didn't. We don't, we, we you know, inside, not as much outside, yes. To that point, what he's going to follow up. I was going to lose me. Uh, to that point, Gary Kendrick started 23 games for mm -hmm. the last couple of years. He has a lot of inside knowledge. Earlier today, JT Daniels said that they're not going to hesitate to ask him uh, things. Do you have to change anything with the way you do things because Gary knows things so well? Yeah, I don't. I mean, we're we haven't focused on that at all. You know, I don't know what that is. You still got to go out and play. You know, it's not like. Um, uh, we don't do a lot. We we do a lot, and uh, you know maybe he, he can give a 911 on personnel, you know strengths weaknesses. I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't know what that is, but we're just going to focus on us from that standpoint. Brent, what do things look like on Trent at the Sam spot right now? Things look like so. Well, we've got um, uh, Malcolm Green. We've got uh, uh, Barrett Carter. To Mario Goodrich, um, uh, Tyler Venables. Um, we feel pretty good there. Um, not a ton of experience, but guys that can play. And I guess on a related note, your dime personnel, who do you feel comfortable there? My dime? You, well, how, what's our base? Who's our base? Well, we got to focus on the base first. And um, I don't, that's a, it's a good question, but. I don't really get into all the personnel packages and stuff until we put something on tape, you know, and then I don't think it serves us well, um, Anna, to, to put all that out there yet, you know. But we've got, you know, um, a bunch of different options, you know. You look at whatever we, we were doing last year, um, most of those guys are all back. And um, so you could probably expect more of the same. What impresses you about Jermaine Burton? What do I, what'd you say? Man, he's really fast, uh, very sudden, incredibly strong. Uh, he's a playmaker, run jet sweeps. He can run by outside. He can catch the short one and make it into a big gain. Um, for a freshman, what he was able to do last year, super impressive. I think he maybe had been banged up some too, uh, maybe some last year, but um, very impressive uh, physically. Uh, really mature and very, very explosive. He's a, he's a dude. He's a big guy, you know, as well. How's Nolan physically going into this week? Yeah, um, he's good. You know, uh, practiced on Friday and Saturday, so hopefully he'll be good to go. You mentioned Barrett Carter a few minutes ago. Guys just got here a little, a little earlier this year. What have you seen from him so far? Can't give you that confidence? Yeah, he he plays fast. Um, we've lined him up at multiple positions, and uh, he doesn't have all the details as, um, as far as um, the scheme and probably uh, can articulate his position, not much around him, but he finds the ball. He knows the difference between run and pass. Uh, he's physical, can tackle, uh, not overwhelmed, um, very humble, uh, uh, great anticipation, uh, really coachable, hard worker. Um, you know, guy that you got to, again, a little bit behind from um, where the, maybe the mid-years were, uh, but you can quickly see, um, you know, all the athletic ability, not just being a good athlete, but a football player, and uh, understands how to use his hands, has gotten and has improved in a lot of different fundamental areas in the short amount of time that we've been here, but was well-versed coming in, too, coming from a great program. North Gwinnett and um, was super uh, uh, well coached and a lot of those things have transitioned with him and uh, so I th what my anticipation is that you'll see that his role just continue to grow and mature as the as the year goes on 
and uh, you know, fortunately for us, there's not this. You know, we gotta. He's got to be a, a starter from day one. Uh, but I do think that when, as he continues to get experience and learns, uh, that he'll make us better. You know, and, and can fill in at multiple positions. But I think we got him penciled in there to be a you know a major factor as well. You know, in the special teams right away. Coach, when you just compare a lot of different things to yeah. Christmas Day. For you, it's 241 days mm-hmm. since Ohio State mm-hmm. today. Are you anxious to get that team out on the field and just see what you've got? And, and then do you think, do you sense out of these older guys that there is an eagerness to kind of get out there and put that last one behind you? I don't know. You know, it. You know, I think it, and again, if you if you you've been covering us since uh, Coach Sweeney's been here, certainly, and it certainly you have me. And I've always, if we won the national championship last year, I'd say the same thing to you right now that I'd say after coming off a loss, uh, that you start over, uh, it's a different DNA. Um, do you learn from that game? Absolutely. Is your pride, was your pride a little hurt? Certainly. You'd be a liar if you said it wasn't. And um, so, but we don't sit around here, maybe like everybody else, when you're, when you're in inner workings and you're building a, a team for this year, you spend no time other than, okay, structurally, schematically, um, uh, operationally, how you can be better from it. Um, and so you incorporate maybe some of those thoughts and schemes and protocols, if you will. But other than that, you don't sit here and, you know, if, if, if the rearview mirror is actually small, like we say, and the windshield's big, then why would you, you know, keep living in the past? Good or bad, you know. So, uh, does that answer your question? It does. Uh, but uh, I don't think you know this team doesn't have a, a lot to prove. You got a lot to earn, you know. And uh, you have a whether you win, uh, you know, this weekend or you you know you're you come out on the wrong end of it. You know, this this is a team that won't be defined by whatever happens this weekend. Uh, certainly, it's not going to be defined. Had nothing, last year has nothing to do with it. And, uh, but as a program, you know, uh, you know, you want to, uh, you know, I think it's important that you, uh, you know, move forward, you know, and uh, get better, you know, from both wins and success and, and from failure. The potential of this defense has drawn a lot of comparisons. 2018, Vincent 2014. Right now, going into the season, based on what you've seen from spring and fall camp, what would you say this is kind of the identity of this group? Yeah, um, I just think it's early, you know. There's just a lot of football to be played. A lot of um, um, growth will take place um, over the course of the year. And um, we're not anywhere uh, close because we haven't done anything yet, we, you know, other than gone to practice. So, uh, you know, that, that'll be determined, you know, by their body of work, you know, throughout the course of the year. And um, we do have, um, again, a year ago, we had nine new starters for the opener. And uh, this year we've got you know, a bunch of guys that have started games. So that part is, is great. And, um, but you still got to go earn it. You got to go work for it. You got to fight for it. You got to respond the right way. Uh, you know, handle adversity, handle success, uh, the ebbs and the flows of a season and certainly a game. And, uh, but I like our leadership. Um, I do like depth at a couple of spots. And um, I think we have some, some playmakers in both the secondary and in the second level, uh, and then up front. And uh, we have some very elite um, players that are capable of playing at a high level. And, uh, but, you know, I don't really, for me personally, and we don't talk about the potential. We do talk about our, our good players need to play well uh, for us to be uh, a really good unit. And they don't have to play perfect, though. Nobody does. So uh, that's what I would say about the potential, you know. Uh, but we do have some uh, some guys that are capable of being, you know, you know, elite players in college football at all three levels. Uh, but we haven't done it yet. So. Uh, as it, you know, I think for us to uh, mature into a really good defense, we need him to mature into a really good player. Um, again, just again, uh, he's, he's, I don't know how many snaps he's played, but it ain't been many, maybe 100 snaps. 
So, uh, but we're counting on some guys to really mature. He's one of them, you know, at a position where, uh, you know, we need to, uh, you know, grow up that depth. You know, he's got to really mature, uh, you know, in all the ways that you mature, not just emotionally, uh, but, you know, physically, you know, the X's and the O's, the, the techniques, you know, all those things, the understanding of what we do. But, uh, you know, he's got to be a, you know, I'm really excited about Trey. You know, he's had a good, really good fall camp, had a good spring, banged up a little bit here and there, but, uh, you know, excited about his future for sure. Great young man. We'll take a couple from Zoom if anybody's got one. All right, if we've got nothing from Zoom, we'll let Coach Venables go. James Knight's going to be joining us momentarily.